Hey, Islanders, and welcome to episode 15 of the Camino Voice. On this episode, I interview the branch manager of Stanwood and Camino Coastal Community Bank, along with the executive vice president and chief retail and marketing officer, Myra Reinhardt and Laura Byers. Hi, I'm Brandon Erickson, and you're listening to the Camino Voice Podcast, where I interview folks around Camino Island and beyond. If you want to stay up to date on events, businesses, and even hear a little history of this area, subscribe to this podcast and share with your friends. Thanks for listening. Hey, Islanders, and welcome to another episode. On this episode, this is my very first two-person interview that I get to do with Myra and Laura from Coastal Community Bank. And full disclosure, before we get into the interview, I am a customer of Coastal Community Bank. Um, so just wanted to make sure that was out there. But besides that, they have been, they have, they were actually the first bank that I ever banked with. And I still bank with them today. So they are such a great bank. They really do put community first. And uh, in this inter- episode, we get into uh, Myra and Laura, how they met each other, and how this dynamic duo has continued to uh, move up the ranks at Coastal Community Bank, how they started in a car and uh, convinced people to give them their money and get started with Coastal. So um, without further ado, please enjoy this conversation with Myra Reinhardt and Laura Byers. Hey, Islanders, it's Brandon with the Camino Voice, and I'm here today with the branch manager of the Stanwood and Camino Coastal Community Branches, Myra Reinhardt, and, <laughs> is that right? Okay, cool. Um, and the executive vice president, Laura Byers. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Sorry, it was uh, difficult getting through my first uh, two-name interview introduction. <laughs> well, and banking titles are always hard to get through, too. <laughs> All right. So um, before we get started with everything, um, I wanted to jump into um, how did you guys actually get to know each other and how long have you known each other? So I'll take that one. Um, I was working outside of the community and lived on the south end of Camino Island and wanted to get closer to home. And a small community bank had just opened a branch in Stanwood. So I stopped in, handed off my resume to a lovely woman named Laura Byers. That's how we met. The rest is history. And how, how long ago was that? Uh, you're dating me. That was 1998. <clears throat> All right. So you guys, so you started there. That's where you, and then, then what happened from there? What was the next kind of steps? Let me take it. So the bank that we were working for at the time was being bought by a larger bank. And we didn't feel that that bank was going to allow us to continue to serve our customers the way we liked to in banking. And we reached out to Coastal Community Bank to see if they were interested in opening a branch in the Stanwood Camino market. And um, we told them that Myra and I thought that we could connect with the community really well. And the rest is history. We've been here 15 years. Very cool. So you guys actually, <clears throat> did you guys have um, previous exposure to Coastal? I knew people at Coastal and I knew the then president. And, and banking's a really small industry, so you get so you know other people at other banks. And, and we knew that Coastal was a community bank and focused on um, connection to the neighbors and, and providing banking the way we wanted to. So yeah, we had a pretty good understanding of it. Okay. So was was that a hard sell to try and get them to come to a like a small community because that was 15 years ago. It was less popping and less stuff going on. I don't think it was a hard sell at all. I think it was a surprise to the then president when we looked at him and said, "Yeah, here's what we can do, um, but you don't get one of us. It's all or none. I'm going with her, she's going with me, or we're going to do something different." And he thought about it and it seemed like a win-win for the bank and for us. All right. So then uh, let me actually take it back a little further. How did you two get started in banking? So you got started in banking when you walked up and asked for an interview. But then um, how how did you get started, Laura? I started as a teller. I had been working uh, retail and I thought, you know, banking is a lot like retail. It's a lot like working in a department store, except for there's no holidays and nights and weekends. And so I (laughs) thought I could be a teller. And um, sure enough, I started out as a teller and I worked my way up. I've been a branch manager, a regional manager. I've done commercial lending. I've done mortgage lending. So that's the great thing about banking is you can start in one position and you get the opportunity to do lots of different things. 
Yeah, that's neat. And yeah, I I've, I've know that <clears throat> from a college student's perspective, when we were in college, I talked to different people and they're like, man, if you can get the bank job, that's the best because usually they pay higher and then they're like, you get weekends and holidays. And <laughs> so <laughs> It's a great gig if you can get it. <laughs> So, and then what, what started you with banking then, Myra? Very similar. Um, I worked in a grocery store and had been there quite some time, and they were actually bought out, and I ended up being laid off. And uh, one of my coworkers said, hey, you know, my wife, she needs a teller. And I went, hmm, I've been dealing with money for a decade. I've been in customer service for a decade. And so um, that's how I started, was being a teller. And uh, similar to Laura, um, Mortgage lending, consumer lending, a little commercial lending. Banking is one of those great industries where um, you really have an opportunity to learn things uh, institutionally by being part of it. And um, there's a lot of tools within that can help you learn and grow. Yeah. Does, does Coastal provide those tools or is it kind of what you learn on the go through working with a lot of different people? I would say Coastal provides the environment yeah. where someone who wants to learn is given the opportunity mm -hmm. to do so. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite examples is um, there's many employees who have started at Stanwood Camino, and we have someone who um, became a branch manager. We have someone who now is in our mortgage lending department. We have someone who is in our marketing department, someone in our electronic banking. So all of those folks started in the Stanwood Camino branch. Okay, that's that's great. Um, so then, how long have you both lived on Camino then? Well, I've been here the longest, so I'll go first. <coughs> um, I have lived on Camino actually since um, 1989, so okay. 30 years. Wow. Former South Ender. I'm reformed. I'm on the North End now. Yeah, and I've lived on Camino over 20 years. Okay. I'm still kind of a newcomer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, depending on who you're talking to. Yeah. So, although we've had a lot of new uh, fresh blood lately of people moving on and um, more families and stuff like yeah. that, it seems like. So, yeah. um, very cool. How how have you guys seen Camino change over that time? That's a, a decent amount of time. So. Yeah. so, one of the big changes for me was I used to drive from my home down near Dalman Road to I-5 and there were no stoplights between here and there. Um, so... The stoplights took some getting used to. Um, another change, I used to count on my power being out at least 48 hours, if not a week, during the winter. Um, the great changes are now I have choices about restaurants. I have choices about grocery stores. I have choices about entertainment. Um, saw the Camino Center be built and mm -hmm. how much that's grown. Um, saw Cama Beach and now Barnum Point um, become a part of the community. So it's been really lovely to see all the growth that way. Yeah. 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 I, I would agree with Myra. I think, you know, traffic has certainly changed and the traffic lights, but the resources and the people. Camino used to be the sleepy island that really only summer cabins came to or, or people lived on it, you know, because they wanted a certain lifestyle. Now it's a destination. There's, as she said, the, the Camino marketplace, the, you know, there's things going on at IGA, there's Barnum Point, there's Iverson, there's Cama Beach. Um, yeah, the canopy. I was yeah. just going to say the canopy tours. There's so many things that are now attracting people to the island for weekends and vacations. That's a real change, and that's a, a real positive for the economy. Yeah, yeah, and it's been. <coughs> um, we've seen a lot of <clears throat> uh, with like canopy tours. I know that they do a lot of events and stuff mm -hmm. as well. And then um, here at the complex, we've been trying to pull more events too. So. Um, I think it's great to see more events get started, more things for the community. Um, we're always for that. So yeah. it's been really good. Um, so <clears throat> in your own words, what makes Coastal Community different from other banks? I, I'm going to take that one. I, you know, I've worked in several banks. And, and to me, the thing that makes Coastal really different is it it's the people that are, are drawn to it. It starts at the top. And the decisions that are made at Coastal are made locally. I'm, I'm in this community. I'm sitting across the table from customers. I'm interacting with customers. I'm shopping with customers. I'm not making decisions in some conference room in the Midwest deciding to close drive-ups 
or deciding that we're going to behave in a certain way. I have to interact with customers, and I think that's what makes us different, is we're very customer-centric, we're very customer-focused, and, and we're very engaged with the communities that we interact with. Yeah, and I've, <clears throat> I mean, being a, full disclosure, being a customer of Coastal Community Bank, but um, I've experienced that in, in multiple different ways. Um, um, back when I was had just a personal account, there was a time where uh, I had an overdraw on the account, and I got a phone call. Um, actually, I think Myra might have called me and was like, hey, just want to let you know, like, looks like you have an overdraw. Um, if you can deposit this, you know, in time, we can probably fix that. And so anyways, we were like, she helped work me, walk me through that because I was young and not paying attention and um, helped me through that. And then on this bigger scale, like with, with the businesses and stuff, there's been some points where something gets missed and, and um, Coastal's there to help out and make sure we, we make the right decision. So, um, yeah, we've really appreciated that with, with Coastal. So, um, so <clears throat> and I think you guys mentioned earlier, you guys have decided or – you guys have complementary skill sets and stuff. Um, what kind of made you guys go in the directions that you ended up going in with everything? Do you mean career-wise? Or yes, mean yeah, yeah. So, like, you've moved towards being um, towards branch manager, and then you've worked towards um, the, the full title of executive vice president <laughs> and chief retail and marketing officer. I'm going to let Laura go first because my reason for being the branch manager has everything to do with her reasons for doing other things. Okay. Um, my reason for doing other things is, I, I first of all, I loved being a branch manager. I love the customer interaction. I love the ability to be involved in the community in a meaningful way. And I really miss that sometimes. But I felt very strongly that the person who is in charge of the branches and marketing has to understand who Coastal is and who our communities are. And I couldn't let somebody come in from the outside and make decisions about how we function and how we interact with our customers who didn't get that customers come first and people matter. And, and I didn't want to be in that big bank environment where the bank owns the customer as opposed to Myra owning the customer and being responsible for them and interacting with them. I, I just felt like it was too important for me not to step up and take that position um, because I really care about the people I work with and I really care about the bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so for you, for Myra, that was... Almost the exact same reasons. Yeah. Um, I was the assistant manager when we first started the offices here. Laura was the manager. And um, when she went to that next level, I thought, hmm, well, I can stay the assistant to the next manager that comes in, and then that manager is going to tell me how I'm going to treat clients, how I'm going to interact with my community, or I can take a step forward and be that branch manager, and then I get to choose how our customers are treated and how we interact with the community, and it's been a very rewarding thing, and I'm really glad I did. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I it's, it's, uh, it's neat to see how much it's grown as well, um, because... I mean, when it started on the island, it was, I mean, still near here, but it was smaller out of a side office. And, um, yeah, no, it's been neat to be able to see it grow. Um, okay, so um, I have, usually I go through some rapid-fire questions. Um, they're just kind of about the island and everything. So um, the first one is, do you guys have a lesser-known or kind of secret location you guys like to hang out on the island? Well, lesser-known or secret. Um, there's a place I like to hang out, but actually my lesser known or secret is in my backyard. Oh. <laughs> there's deer, there's bunnies, there are eagles. Um, more often than not, hopefully, there's friends and family. That's my real secret place. Yeah, I, I love Iverson. Um, yeah. I just, I don't think as many people appreciate what a great walk it is and mm -hmm. how easy it is to get to. Um, but I agree, my backyard is, you know, I commute into Everett, and there's something about driving onto the island where I let everything go. Um, I, I just, once you get here, there's a reason for being here, and, and um, it, that it, the whole island is an amazing place. Yeah. Yeah, I know uh, Iverson has been a favorite beach um, for me growing up. It was, a kind of, it was definitely less well-known then. It still isn't super well-known by outsiders, but... Um, it was a place that we would go and hang out. The Hobbit Trail in that back area is yeah. always a great walk. And um, yeah, my favorite great. public place is actually Utsalati Point. There's a little picnic table, and we have renamed it Eagle Park. 
Okay. Because every time you go there, you sit at that picnic table, and they just come say hello. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I don't think we've had that one yet, so it's perfect. It's because it's secret. It's oh, secret. Right. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, next. Uh, pretend you have a friend coming in from out of town. Uh, what would the first day look like here? I'll go first on this one. Um, we actually have that happen at our house a lot. Um, usually, one or both of the state parks um, love to take them to Kama Beach, mm -hmm. um, particularly if the restaurant's open to get some um, locally sourced fare. Um, if it's crabbing season, that's a duh. We've got to do that. Um, and hopefully, you know, maybe visit some local restaurants, do some other things interactive. But at the end of the day, they've got to see the sunset. Yeah. Yeah. And where yeah. do you go for that? Um, my favorite is Mabana. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, it depend. It really depends on the person. You know, there's zip lining. There's there's always festivals and fun things to do. Um, I love just to spend the first day at home, mm -hmm. letting them see the the how the light changes. How you do have deer and bunnies and eagles, and we've got a pond, so we get ducks, and um, every once in a while we'll get a kingfisher or some of those kinds of things come through. And then taking them to a local restaurant or or coming here to shop. I mean, mm -hmm. for that's another great thing to do. Um, get ice cream in the summer. Get Orlando's, and uh, you know, it it really depends on the person. But there, you can find something for anybody here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, who is an interesting person in this community that I should interview next? Actually, we both landed on Teresa Metzger. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, uh, let's see. And then lastly, if you could have a message on a billboard uh, right as you're driving on to Kameno, um, what would that say? I'll go first. Uh, mine would be get involved, volunteer. I, the thing that I love most about the whole Stanwood Camino community is how involved people are and the philanthropy here is, is like no other. And, and so I would hope that people who are coming onto the island and have, have opinions about how it should be um, get involved and have a voice and volunteer. And um, there's so many different ways for them to be engaged in something they're interested in. So that would be my message. Yeah. Mine would be stay and play. You're going to love this place. Yeah. 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 Everybody that comes here does. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a neat place. It's, um, as I've been interviewing people and, and talking to them, um, very few of them have come to the island as their main place to, like, that wasn't their landing zone. That wasn't what they were planning on doing. Um, many people have either got a job in Seattle or Everett um, or elsewhere in the surrounding cities. And um, we're driving around those areas, and we're like, no, not quite, not quite. And then they would pass, you know, Stanwood Kameno, and they're like, why Kameno Island? Can you get there? So they'll, you know, they drive on, and most people, like, it's instant. When they, yeah. when they get on the island, they're like, okay, this is where I'm going to set roots down. Yeah, because um, yeah, a lot of places, uh, uh, everyone that's here on Kameno chooses to be on Kameno. It's not forced upon them. Yeah, Very yeah, true. and I think yeah. you feel that in the community. Yeah, absolutely. We we came just as you said because we were looking for views and acreage, and we really couldn't find what we were looking for anywhere else. And Camino had it, and then we've stayed for the people, we've stayed for the community and the the resources and the way of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, very cool. Well, is there anything else you guys want to add? Well, I wanted to add. You mentioned that we started. Um, in a small building. Yeah. Um, you might not realize we actually started in a car. <laughs> no, I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> <laughs> One of my, the most rewarding things uh, career-wise was when we first started the offices here and we didn't have an office. Mm -hmm. And we would meet with people wherever we needed to meet with them, in the school cafeteria, at their place of business, at uh, Islanders when it was a coffee shop, mm -hmm. and um, take their information, and they would give us an opening deposit, and then we would have to go to Everett to open the account and meet them the next day. And um, the trust of the community and of those people who said, you know what, we want to bank with a small community bank, and we're committed to that, and um, we trust the two of you to take care of us. Yeah. yeah. I can't put into words what that means. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah, I didn't know that. It was yeah. it was a, around before it was even around. Yeah, <laughs> it was th that that was probably one of the most uh, probably the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, very cool. Well, thank you both for b joining me on the podcast today. Um, really appreciate you guys coming out. Thanks for having us, and thanks for being a customer. Yeah.
It matters. Yeah, no, I love Coastal Community Bank. We're glad that we're they're right next door, so it's easy. <laughs> so, all right, and Islanders, I will talk to you on the next one. Well, a big thank you to Myra Reinhart and Laura Byers for joining me on the podcast today, and thank you for listening. If you haven't already, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform. And if you want more information on this episode or previous episodes, go to kamenocommons.com slash podcast. That's kamenocommons.com slash podcast. Thanks for listening and see you next time. It's so much harder to do this. Okay. I'm just going to start over again.